So in this tutorial, we'll be thinking about or we'll be studying about the reflection of sound and then we need to study about echo echo and this is the second tutorial after the previous one that I have explained about the definitions, characteristics and uh, the differences of or the relations of the velocity of sound and the temperature. So this is the second class of sounds and the sixth class of the chapter under wave and sound uh, is because about the reflections and the echo. So what is the reflections of sound? That means that we know that sound produced from the vibrations and it propagates through a, a medium which is, is elastic medium and that is why sound is a mechanical wave and as well as sound is longitudinal wave as because it propagates through the rarefactions and the compressions of the medium. Now you think that there is a source of a sound and, and there is a reflectant. Huh? There is a reflectant, suppose this is a wall. So, what's actually going on here and why um, echo and reflection of sound is important? Think about if the sound is traversed and it's moving directly through this way and then it cannot pass through this medium as because this is a dense medium and this is a wall so it definitely come back to the previous one so when it come back to the previous one it means this is the reflection that means coming back so when sound is propagating it through an elastic medium and then it reflects on any any factor then it come back again to the previous one this is known as reflection of sound. So what is echo actually? Echo is simply the results of the reflection of sound when we can hear the producing sounds repeatedly after the reflection of sound. So echo means suppose somebody is standing in the back of the river or in front of a big mountains or even a big room can be the source of echo suppose somebody is saying hello and then after some time uh, the, the the sound is coming back to the person again hello hello that means the the repetitions or the reflections of sound and that is known as echo so echo means the the repetitions of the sounds for the reflections is known as echo. Now the question is why this echo, like why we hear it, why and what is the science between these? Because before we are going to explain, we need to know about the persistence period of the sensation of sound, which is 0 0.1 second. What does it mean actually, 0 0.1 second? It means that when we hear any sound, that sensations persist in our brain for 0.1 second that means we are hearing the sounds from surroundings in every moment every single sound persists in our brain for 1 by 10 seconds which is 0.1 second so in this time period if the sounds come back that our brain cannot distinguish these two sounds but if the sound that we are producing or we are hearing, if we hear this same sound after the persistence period of time, then we hear it twice and thrice. That is the feeling of echo. That is the science inside because that time should be passed before hearing the second voice or second sound of the first one. So why? the distance is important. Think about this is the source and this is the reflector. Reflector. So the distance between this is 2D. Why? As because if the distance is D then sound travels once in that direction and again in the reverse direction. So the crossed or the traversed distance or the distance is about d plus d which is 2d and if we say the time was passing through is t that is the time then we must know the velocity is the distance traversed by the sound upon the required time 
and that is why we need to consider 2D in case of considering the reflection of sound. In this case especially we need to think distance twice and now if you think <clears throat> suppose this is 0 degrees Celsius in air so in our day-to-day -day life that the room we have like which is a 5 meter distance or even 10 meter distance suppose a room that I'm standing on the the wall is a 10 meters each from my side so if I produce any sound will I hear any echo will I feel any echo if the the longest the longest reflector is 10 meter ahead and away from me or even if I say that if the the building is uh, 15 meter away from me right now if I say the sound will I feel an echo answer is no why why this uh, the distance is important why this distance factor to hear the echo is because this time is a factor as we know that 0.1 second is the period of persistence of sound in our brain so it means when I say any sound or when I utter any voice or suppose I say hello that sounds need to travel to the reflector and then when it's coming to me in the meantime at least 0.1 second should be passed otherwise if the sound go and come back to me within 0.1 second <clears throat> I won't feel any echo because the same I, my brain cannot actually distinguish these two sounds but if the distance is 20 meter <clears throat> from me and if I say in a word or in sounds then it will pass 20 meter first and then again come back 20 meter that means it need to pass 40 meter back and forth and then within 0.1 second when my persistence time will work up and then I again hear two sounds so then I will feel this is echo so it means that the reflector should be at least a minimum distance to feel the echo and what is the distance now I need to find what is the distance now you think the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius okay before going to say that suppose 0 degrees Celsius so in 0 degrees Celsius temperature the velocity is 332 meter per second so now if the question is what is the velocity of sound in 25 degrees Celsius in air now we need to find that V1 by V2 is equal root over T1 by T2 okay so now if I say that v1 is 332 as because this is 0 degrees Celsius and v2 is the velocity in 25 degrees Celsius so we can say that t1 is 273 Kelvin as because this is 0 degrees Celsius and 25 degrees Celsius means uh, 225 uh, so 98 Kelvin okay so now if I see the calculations that is, if I say the power 273 divided by 298, that is 0.95. So if I divide 0.95, I mean 3.32 divided by answer, that is 346.86. So we can say that V2 is actually 346.86 means 346.9, okay, meter per second. Now if I say that what is the minimum distance should be between the source and the reflector in 0 degrees Celsius then we need to think this is so we say that 2d is equal v times t hmm? so what is the value of d that is v times t by d so sorry v times t divided by 2 so now we say V that is 0 degrees Celsius which is 332 times that T is the persistent period of the sensation of sound which is 0 0.1 divided by 2 now you think that this is 33.2 by 2 that should be 16.6 meter so if 
you are standing in 0 degree Celsius. Suppose, and you want to hear an echo, then the reflector should be at least 16.6 .6 meter away from you. If it is 17 meter, okay. If it is 18 meter, more okay. You will feel the echo. But if the distance is 16.4 meter, then you won't hear the echoes because if the reflector is away 16.4 meter from you, you won't distinguish, your brain won't distinguish the differences between the previous sound and the reflection of the sound. So it means that we won't hear echo if the reflections or the, or the distance is less than 16.6 .6 meter. So think about, uh, and if zero degrees Celsius is not as possible, if I say the normal temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, so what will happen if temperature increase, then again in zero degrees Celsius, it was 32, 332. So now in 25 degrees Celsius, instead of 332, it would be 346.9. So it should be like that. So this is 34.69 by 2. This is more than 17 meter actually. So you can say that 34.69 divided by 2 is actually 17.345 meter. So it is 17.345 meter. So it means in 25 degrees Celsius, when the velocity is so high, so sound will traverse more distance than the expected. Like it was 332 meter per second. That means in zero degrees Celsius, sound traverse. 332 meter in one second and now it's traversed 347 meter per one second so per second so when you will be standing in 25 degrees celsius the minimum distance required from you and your reflector is more than 17.34 meter so if you're standing on 25 degrees celsius and if the reflector is 18 meter away from you and if you say any sound like hello then you will feel after some time the again hello is coming that means you will feel the echo okay i hope you understand so this is the process we find the velocity of sound in different temperature and this is very important to solve the mathematical problems in this chapter to use these equations because uh, it's always important the temperature is given so the velocity will definitely vary in this in, in finding the uh, other equations so I hope you understand the reflection of sound now the question is what is the uses of echo what is the uses of echo echo can be used in a different way to, to find to determine the depth of a well or even the depth of an ocean actually even what so think about uh, this is a um, uh, this is a well where uh, actually you know it this is a well and there is no water okay so we need to determine the distance or the depth of the well, uh, well. so if i say that the depth is actually h huh? So think about h that we we are trying to figure it out that what is the value of h. Now a sound has been produced in the mouth of the well or in the just painting surface of the well and then when the sound will be produced a stopwatch should be there. So when the sound is produced that sound will go to the base of the well and then it will come back again and then we will hear an echo and when the sound will be produced the stopwatch will be started and then just after hearing the first echo will stop the stopwatch and then we will find the time required of, of the sound traverse two times in the well so that means sounds is just coming and just reflecting the base of the well and then returning back so we'll hear an echo as because we are assuming that this thing is at least 17 meter so if we say that the velocity of the sound is v 
if we say the time of the stopwatch is showing t, we don't know the t. I mean, if it is more depth, then t will be so higher. So it depends. So what is the equation that we can use? We can use that velocity is actually 2h. We were supposed to say the 2d, but right now this is the height is 2h. h and h. So first times and second times. It's traversing two times by t. Now, what is the value of h that is v times t divided by 2? Now you think the velocity if it is given 38 degrees Celsius so and then what to do so we can find that V1 by V2 or T1 by T2 so you know that 0 degrees Celsius 332 so you need to find out the velocity of 38 degrees Celsius so then you will have this V and your stopwatch reading will give you the value of t. So using this v times t by 2, we can have determined that the velocity uh, the, the, the value or the height of the wheel. So I hope you understand. So this is the uses of v eco and even it's possible in uh, determining the depth of an ocean of any place. So I need an ocean uh, like huge ship. And inside, uh, there is a machine it's called fathometer that can be used to determine in the same way, uh, uh, and we can determine the the depth of an ocean. So there, the picture will be different. Like this is an ocean, a huge place, and uh, this is a water. So if I say that this is a ship, and in, this, in the just base of the ship, there will be a machine called fathometer that can determine the velocity of sound. So when it produces sound, and with this as just when it produces sound, it will definitely start on stopwatch, and then it will definitely go to the base of the ocean, and then it will come back, and then after we hear the first echo, the time will be counted, and we know the velocity of sound inside. The marine water is definitely high. So we know that velocity is 1450 meter per second in water, but in marine water the velocity is should be more as because the density of marine water is higher than the normal water. So we can use this T also, so we can find the height of this area is actually V times T by 2. So V is the velocity that will be calculated in the marine water and also time is showing the time in the stopwatch. So using it, we can find the height of an ocean. So I hope it's very clear for you that what is the reflection of sound and why a minimum uh, distance is required for calculate or for, for hearing the echo of any temperature. And of course you know what is the definition of echo and the uses of echo. So I hope that you understand a very simple concept and in the next video I shall uh, discuss about uh, the music wave and some other properties of uh, sound and of course the characteristics of sound you know uh, that I have in my previous video I have already explained it and uh, if you just read your book properly and with the concentrations from your heart I think study will be more enjoyable and more uh, really enjoyable and feeling good when you study so I hope that you'll get it and of course I'm trying my level best to contribute some part of explanations from my side so that it would be easier for you to get the concept for physics chemistry and biology and you of course after watching this tutorial if you feel good if you understand it let me know in the comment sections I will definitely try to adjust all these things in my next uh, lectures or tutorials. So see you, take care, stay well.